Hi and welcome to my place. Have I got a treat for those of you out there who have wanted to know how to do verdigris. There are three or four different ways that you can do it, but I really like this new technique that I've discovered. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this terracotta Buddha, any kind of surface can be verdigreed, but I'm using the terracotta Buddha and what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it into this. Isn't that just fabulous? It looks like it's come out of a dig and it's been in the ground for about 10,000 years. I absolutely love that technique. I like to do this on vases, onto all sorts of surfaces, but this will be the best way to do it today. Right, from there, once you've got um, the object that you're going to verdigree, you then need to undercoat it, which I've done here, and then what you need to do is, I've got these two products down here, one's a verdigris base and the other is an acid and this stuff is fantastic because it's actually got the copper in it. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. So I like to undercoat everything, just a rough coat is all you need to do. From there the next thing to do is to give this a good shake and then it is just a matter of, oops, take that off there, of getting your paintbrush and you just put a nice even coat of this lovely browny black stuff all over it. Then you need to let that dry. Now, I've got one that I've already done. This is it here. And when you see it, it, it dries to sort of look like a little bit of bronziness. Well, it is, good. it is like bronze at this stage. So once that is dry, the next thing that you do I love this bit, with a gloves on because we're going to be using an, ex, an acid or an oxidizing liquid. Put your gloves on and because this is a little bit messy I'm going to use this little tray here. I'll just get rid of that so that we've got a bit more room and I'll put that over there out of the way. Right, onto a tray with some more cellophane onto it. And with gloves on, don't think the gloves are important. Give this a little shake. And then what we're going to do is hit the entire surface with this. And it takes, it's like magic watching it happen. I absolutely love it. But just make sure that all of your surfaces are done. And don't worry about that if there's little bits that you've missed, don't worry about that at this stage. But go from the underneath and like try and if you're doing something like this Buddha here, make sure that you get all of it covered into all of those little wee nooks and crannies. So take that all over there. And this will it starts to oxidize almost within seconds. I just put another bit onto there, like so, take that around to there, and then turn it over this side. And to get into the hairy bits, what I did was I just put little bits on there, and what will happen is these will drop down. Now, it will take, it takes like about, I don't know, two or three minutes for it to start getting to that sort of like lovely oxidation into it. So the reason it does that is because, as I said, this copper in the base paint, hitting it with the oxidizing acid, just creates this fabulous, fabulous effect. Isn't that just cool and groovy? I absolutely love it. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at this technique. I'll show you another method of using a spray can another day. I love this idea. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again. Thank you.